All right, so I guess it's sharing, guys. Ah, I'm coming out. I want a walk to settle. Okay, so, <laughs> so today is a conversation about our society's way of dealing with uh, me mental wellness. So my whole life, my parents worked. Grew up in Northern Virginia. So anytime I had a problem, they send me to a shrink. It didn't matter what I said or how I felt. So since eight years old, I was going to shrinks anytime I'd have an issue. And you, uh, the thing with that is you say how you feel and they listen, which is good. But they didn't follow up with uh, advice to move past it. And then you would pay them and you would go home crying like, what the hell, you know, that didn't help. And then I'm paying you, so you eat a steak dinner off of my sorrow. Uh, I never was comfortable with that. I never found that uh, helpful at all. If anything, it, it, it worsens a, a person's, um, it almost puts like a value on a person's experiences, who values it. And I, I remember telling him at one point, we're gonna, the, the seats are going to switch. I'm going to end up advising you guys, so here we are. <laughs> um, and I remember going one day to, you know, I've always found, uh, I, don't, I don't drink alcohol, really. Once in a while, I'll have a beer. Uh, marijuana has been very um, helpful to resonate our vibration higher. Get high, right? It just means a higher vibration. So it makes you feel uh, more at peace, happier. And I've, you know, when I've gone to these, um, places of health, like mental institutions, the thing people have to understand is when you talk about needing help, now these are just regular people with everyday issues trying to seek help and, and find solution. This is a very healthy thing. My thing is the way American society or what have you has treated it is they give you drugs. My mom always told me, don't do drugs. Because it numbs you. It doesn't let you see what you need to see. And as I was talking to people, they were having regular problems. And they were upset even more because the system was labeling them before they even talked to these people. They were giving them pills that were making them just sit there and drool on themselves. It was, it was very disheartening, especially having gone in there to try to solve my own issues. At the same time, I feel very, very empowered to know that I could talk to everyone and lift them up. And I got them through that time because they helped me get through that time or got my spark. And I started, you know, witnessing and reflecting. I didn't eat because the food there was made me uh, turn my stomach. So I lived off a of cocktail fruit. You weren't allowed to wear a bra. You'd have to wear paper clothes. You weren't allowed. It took me a couple days just to get a toothbrush. I had gone in there with a, uh, a blanket to comfort myself. And they, uh, when they checked me in, they took away the blanket. I said, what are you doing? Like, I, it's my blanket. And they're like, oh, we don't know if you put a razor in there. And I was like, excuse you? Wow, okay. Uh, they also said I was suicidal, and I never was. <coughs> and they kept me there against my will at Cornwall Hospital. And I said, I don't want to be here. I'm fine. I'll go find advice somewhere else. They wouldn't let me leave. So for five days, they kept me there. They had somebody watch me sleep. They had a, some nurse, whatever, literally sit in the room and stare at me all night. It's very disturbing. And then when all the drugs that they put me up on, I try to get up in the morning and just, you know, walk it off, just calm myself down. And I was told to go back to my room because I was dangerous. And I just looked at the woman <laughs> and I said, I obviously see who the dangerous one is. It's not me. And uh, so with that being said, 
understand that the system was always, excuse my language, but fucked up. It's clear to see who the mentally ill ones are, the one running the institutions. These people have, are still practicing ECT shock therapy. All the drugs that they give you, I have spoken to a psychiatrist who has her own private practice. She says all of them are made as a um, quote unquote black box drug. Basically it's meant to, to kill people. So we must rise up and stop these systems because they're not working in our favor. Not only are they illegal, they're also very immoral. So I just thought I'd be brave enough to share that with you guys. To know that the way you feel is perfect the way it is. And that you should express the way you feel in a safe environment. Without judgment and without punishment. So I'm always here to listen. I'm always here to give you advice or just to listen or to hold you. Because I understand what it's like to um, be misjudged and have to fight for even who you really are amongst people who think otherwise. So take this as a form of strength that I too have moved past to see what things are and what they're not. And despite all this, I love you guys. <laughs> and it's going to be okay. Just see it for what it is and make the change. Bye. Have a good day.